so we are just back from a photography trip abroad and that has been the trigger for me wanting to do this vlog which is going to be about how we have combined um, travel with wildlife photography specifically the planning that we've put into it and the resulting experiences and photos that we've got from it now I really don't see myself as a travel guru or a wildlife photography guru at all um, it's more that I think we've all got stories to tell, we've all got experiences to learn from and that's kind of the whole purpose of our YouTube channel is sharing as we learn. Um, so yeah, hope it's got some tips in here that might be a benefit to you guys. So this vlog actually started off life in a completely different format. The, the recent trip was to Corsica and initially I filmed myself out in Corsica basically doing a stage-by-stage -stage account of me trying to find interesting birds to photograph um, and I just wasn't really happy with the format of that in that I think that would only have appealed to people who were themselves planning a wildlife photography trip to Corsica and I think those people are probably few and far between um, so I wanted instead this to be a pooling of experiences um, and talk about other other experiences that we've had and identifying general themes basically. So I will obviously be talking a fair bit about Corsica as that's where we're just from but I say I'll combine at least two other trips in, in this chat. Um, so the the first discussion point is the internet search you do before you go, the research that you do. Um, Sam had delegated pretty much entirely to me the choice of where we were going to go on holiday this year. Um, and initially it looked like Sicily was going to be a better option than Corsica. And I think that was mainly because of the quality of the websites. So I found some quite good quality websites talking about interesting animals over in Sicily and I wasn't really finding the equivalent for Corsica. Does that mean that Corsica is inferior with regards to wildlife compared to Sicily or does it mean just that, that the websites were inferior? Um, I don't know in that we didn't go to both so it's not a side-by-side -side comparison um, but I'd like to think that there was a relatively logical thought process behind us choosing Corsica and well to be fair the, the thought process was the purple heron. So um, looking at the species lists of interesting creatures that live in Sicily the one that really stood out for me was the purple heron um, and so I went on the IUCN red list to look at more information about the purple heron and the distribution map shows Corsica being better than Sicily. If you haven't heard of the IUCN Red List, I definitely recommend it as a really good resource. Um, it's written for the scientific community, so there's a fair amount of information on there about taxonomy, habitat, threats to species survival with an overall um, endangered rating. But for the purpose of checking things out for this trip, it was the distribution maps that were particularly useful. Um, BirdLife International also has a very good quality website, um, again with distribution maps. I'd recommend both of those. And personally, I think that I, I would rather place more emphasis on something that's written for the scientific community, something that is therefore potentially less biased than maybe a haphazard selection of other websites where one website is, is written for Corsica and a completely different website is written for, for Sicily and you're, com you're comparing the two, whereas say it feels a little bit more scientific to be, be looking at the IUCN red list, for example. Um, the second type of um, website that I was looking at was Birdwatchers Blogs. So these are a really good resource in that they tell you the month as well as the year, obviously, that um, they saw whichever species and pretty much the exact location that they saw the birds as well. So a really good resource to, to plan your trip. 
But what I don't want you to think is that I basically read a bird watcher's blog and then essentially reenacted what they had done several years previously, because that's not the way it works. Um, and it's not what happened to us at all. So that leads me on to discussion point number two, which is that it's really good to be flexible, both with regards what species you're interested in photographing, but also with regards to the location. So with Corsica, um, we had identified a lake on the east of the island called Derbino um, that looked to be quite promising with regards what bird watchers had seen. By now I had widened my desired list from not just the purple heron, but I also wanted to see at least one of Squacko heron, flamingo and Eurasian spoonbill. Um, so this lake looked great. What actually worked out far better for us was a much smaller lake, very close to where we were staying. And that worked out great because I could basically get out of bed in the morning and go straight down to the lake uh, for sunrise and see what birds were present there. And this lake just seemed better in that I never failed to see an egret every time I went down there. And it was there that I saw the flamingo and I also photographed a, a juvenile grey heron. I didn't see any squacko herons or purple herons but I got quite close to the juvenile grey heron so that was that was quite enjoyable. Um, so that kind of goes to show that it's useful to be flexible with regards location when out on location. So I was still looking for the same species, I was still looking for purple heron, squacko heron, flamingo, Eurasian spoonbill. But slight change of location did prove to be more useful in this regard. So actually the best example of a trip where it was beneficial to be flexible with regards to our photographic subject um, was a holiday we did last year. So we did a tropical holiday and I was fully expecting that our main photographic subjects would be fruit bats and tree frogs from the internet search that I'd done beforehand. Um, it turns out the best shot that I got was of periwinkles on a beach. Um, did I go to the Southern Hemisphere expecting to take photos of periwinkles? Of course I didn't, um, but that's how it worked out. Um, I actually got highly commended for this in a photography competition um, and literally the only, the only planning beforehand other than actually taking the shot was that I knew about the photography competition and I knew about the categories um, for entry. So when I saw the periwinkles, I immediately thought about it. But I definitely, before I got on the plane, I was not expecting to take photos of periwinkles on the beach. Um, the other creature that I really enjoyed photographing out there were ghost crabs. And I think I've got some decent shots of them. I would have liked to have taken more, but... Um, the holiday really was a holiday rather than a photography trip. So um, Sam and I really both needed a holiday last year. So that's mainly what the, the, the trip was. Um, as for fruit bats, we did see them. Um, I took several photographs and the best one is this one. I'll be honest with you and I think of this shot as a, a documentary shot. Um, by this, I mean this photograph documents that I have seen fruit bats. I don't think this photo doesn't do anything else for me. Um, it doesn't feel particularly artistic to me. So we didn't see any tree frogs at all. Um, so that was contrary to, to planning. Um, so this kind of also leads me thinking about fruit bats. I think that websites are always going to tell you about creatures that are endemic to that particular location regardless of how easy they are to find or how photographic they are. Um, this has very much been a recurring theme with us in that when we went to the Alps, we were expecting to see marmots, didn't see any. Um, in Corsica, we were on the Aguil de Babella, we were expecting to see wild sheep and we didn't see any either. Sam might have heard one, but yeah, I didn't and I didn't see any either. Um, also websites are always, in my mind, they're going to put emphasis on mammals over birds and birds definitely over insects and crustaceans, for example. 
um, you're not really going to read in a, a guide, a travel guide about the interesting species of insect, for example, whereas you might read about the interesting species of mammal that are out there. So it's always just worth bearing in mind that bias. And if you're interested in taking photos of insects, and I am, then it does help to be aware that you need to be flexible in your, in your subject matter. Um, third point is, it's a little bit of a disclaimer, is that I am talking as somebody who goes on holiday and is very, very interested in photography, um, but is also interested in finding the animals themselves. So you might have gathered this from my last vlog where I get quite excited about finding an owl pellet. I'm still quite excited about the fact I found an owl pellet. Um, but I'm excited because I found it. And that is really what this vlog is all about. It is about the planning that can go into a trip and the, the joy and the satisfaction of if that works out. Um, but also if that plan doesn't work out and you go with a different plan, something else works out, that can also be great too. Um, but just doing it, going out there and trying to get new experiences, trying to take photographs of things you haven't photographed before. And kind of on a tangential comment really about finding things yourself, um, not really related to photography, which is why it's tangential. Um, I really wanted to hear a scopsal out in Corsica. Um, I didn't really expect to get any decent photographs one and I didn't we, we didn't see it at all um, but I had read on bird watchers blogs that scops owls live out in Corsica I had listened to BBC Radio 4's tweet of the day to hear what they they sound like if you don't know what a scops owl sounds like it basically sounds like a domestic smoke alarm when the battery is dying and out in Corsica we heard one and so yeah there is joy in that there is joy in planning to do something setting yourself a goal and achieving it whether that's photographic or not but just going out there and finding wildlife um i personally really really enjoy so um yes if you like this video please do click like please let me know your comments below um and thank you for watching thanks <laughs>